Hi, this is just a quick video to talk about doing some uh, audio editing uh, using Adobe Audition for recording a narration or a scratch track for a narration for an animation. Um, now this is something I just learned and I feel kind of foolish for not having known before because this has always been a big pain uh, to do. So the way that I record a scratch track or the final narration if I'm doing it myself um, is to have the speaker myself or somebody else just read the script and all together in one go and if they make a mistake then just to pause and retake that and so between each phrase you can see here I have a, a significant gap and I tend to clip these out so rather than recording each phrase as a clip um, and saving them out just record the whole narration in one go leaving some pauses so you can identify where the breaks in the phrases are now where you break them up is up to you you can be very granular about it or you can have long stretches having short clips is beneficial because then you can move them around in after effects or uh, premiere when you're putting together your video uh, but it also has the disadvantage of potentially sounding a little bit disjointed because you don't have natural uh, continuation from one phrase to the next. So I do something sort of in between. So this is uh, an animation, a narration for an animation for a biology uh, concept called parthenogenesis. And I recorded this myself. So it's just me speaking uh, the scratch track to time my animation to. So you can hear it here. Oogenesis is a hard word to say over and over again. Anyway, so the way that I've done this in the past was I just go through and I take a clip that I want and let me just magnify an area. Let's say I wanted this clip. I would just go in, select this, right click or right click. Yeah, save selection as and then save it as a, a wave file somewhere. Give it a name and so on. But there's a much easier way to do this. Now, um, one thing you can do when you're working in Audition is just go somewhere in the timeline that you want to set a marker so you know where you want to clip and you just hit M and it puts a marker here and in the marker menu over here you can see that it's added it here and you can name this. Let's call this test. And so it's a good idea to name these intelligently. Uh, but you can see I've got a bunch of markers in here, and some of them look like this one, just this little marker like a shield, uh, and then some of them look like this. These are called range markers, and this is what you have to do. So you create a marker by hitting M, and then when you want to set a range for that marker, you just right-click on it in the timeline here and convert to range, and then you can stretch it out. So you're defining a region. I'm going to delete this one because I don't need that. Uh, but that's what you do. You see I already have a range in here. So this first one's called 001 picture frame. And this is a long phrase, 26 seconds long. But I, I want this to be spoken naturally. So I didn't want to cut this up into clips and put them back together because it's the introduction. Then O2 to answer. So I usually put in the name or a couple of words at the beginning of the phrase so I can refer to it quickly and figure out what's what. But you can see I've gone through and I've done this for each of these. Now instead of selecting a range like this, right clicking save selection as, there is a much easier way to do things. Once you've all you've converted them all to ranges here in the markers palette, you can just select them all holding down shift and then this button here export audio of selected range markers to separate files now this literally saves an hour's work and I don't know why I didn't know it before but um, it's always a good idea when you take on a new project to find some efficiencies somewhere something that you do normally find a better way to do it and in this project I'm happy to say that I figured this out which probably everybody else knows already but anyway so if I click on this, then you can say use marker names and file names. So this is a, a great way to organize your audition file, but also to have it export uh, the clips with uh, sensible names. So this is going to go, uh, I'm going to browse to a new one. So I don't want to overwrite what I have already. Let's 
create a new folder. So this is my scratch track number four. Select this folder. And so we're saving as WAV files. Yes, yes. And just export, and it's done. Now if we go in here, there they all are. It's a miracle. So you have a, a WAV file and then an Adobe Audition uh, peak data file, whatever that is. I guess it's information about the waveform. Uh, but anyway, the thing that you need to take into your uh, After Effects or Premiere for editing things together are these WAV files. So again, that tedious part of going through, selecting, saving as. Now you are making markers in sort of the same way, but I find in Audition, part of the one of the most tedious parts is the browsing. So if I just went in and did save selection as, then I've got to browse to where I want to go, uh, save. So just takes a few clicks that is really just kind of a pain and you just have to do it for, for each one. Now, it gets easier after you do the first one because you can just select it, but you've got to go through this process over and over again. Um, so anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Create markers, turn them to range markers, select them all, and then export audio of selected range markers as separate files. It's a very simple way to um, speed up your workflow for creating your scratch track. So I hope you find this useful. Thanks.